Hello there. Whatever Tory MPs and members say about Theresa May in public, they must love her in private because they keep making sure she stays in number 10, don't they? Yet again, Teflon Theresa manages to keep her positions as the leader of the Tory party and Prime Minister of the UK. Last night, the 1922 Committee of Backbench Tory MPs decided to keep the no-confidence rules concerning their leader unchanged, so Theresa May is safe from an internal vote of no-confidence until the end of the year. This is in the face of a growing momentum in calls for her to step aside from her fellow MPs, those in her party and people across the country. So how does she do it? Is it because her MPs all privately think she's great, the best person for the job and has the right Brexit deal for the country? Well, that would be a resounding no to all three questions, wouldn't it? No, there are two major issues that are keeping her in place. The first is that the Tories are so low in the water now in the House of Commons that even the slightest rocking of their now rudderless and oarless boat could cause the whole Tory concern to capsize. And the second is that who on earth in their right mind would step forward to pick up Theresa's trash that is causing such a stink in Parliament? And if anyone did step forward to try, they should be instantly disqualified for mental instability anyway. So the longer she stays, the more hideous of a shambles she will make of things. So perversely, the safer her position gets. Now there's some twisted logic for you. So it's not about love for Theresa May and her withdrawal agreement surrender treaty that keeps her in number 10. No, it's more about keeping the Tories in power with neither a credible leader in place nor one ready to realistically step up to the mark, however bad it gets for the party and more importantly, for the country. And on the other side of the Commons we have a bearded Marxist just waiting to get in to do his worst. Now moving on, one thought occurred to me about the Brexit party fronted by Nigel Farage. As I understand it at the moment, the Brexit party has no manifesto. So, if people vote for the Brexit party during the EU elections and its candidates gain seats, what happens if Nigel Farage subsequently issues a policy document and many of his own MEPs and the people who have become paid supporters and many of those that voted for it end up disagreeing with some or even all of those newly minted policies? Would it mean that for the first time in history Brexiteers did not know what they were voting for? Finally, some breaking news about UKIP. It transpires that there is a European elections hustings taking place at 7pm tonight in the Bishop's Wordsworth School in Salisbury. And UKIP MEPs have, at the time of making this video, been de-platformed, so are unable to represent the party and make the case for leaving the EU. I believe that as well as putting the school at odds with democracy, it might also put them in breach of one of the education acts regarding political opinion forming. However, it's good to see that freedom of expression is thriving in the UK education sector, isn't it? Well, as long as you've got what they perceive as being the right, sorry, correct opinion, that is. And it might also backfire as the only news about the hustings tonight will now be UKIP. Anyway, what do you think? Please share and comment and thank you for watching. Please do like and share this video and also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.